Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in the relationship dynamic, the energy that exists between a malignant narcissist, a covert narcissist, psychopathic sort of individual, uh, those cluster B personality disorders, and then those people who they seek to surround themselves, sort of prey on their vulnerabilities. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to those of you who have recently made a donation to Peace and Harmony. It is inspiring me. It's that little flicker that I need to keep going just to know that I'm providing you valuable content that you can apply towards really moving beyond a very confusing, painful relationship and situation in your life. It can become really um, embedded on a number of different layers in your life. So um, I do want to provide you the tools and resources to help you emerge from that. And really oftentimes it's the ability to process and understand what happens on an intellectual, uh, emotional, as well as a spiritual level. So keep all those levels basically in mind when we come to really have these discussions. So thank you so much once again for your donations. It's really helping keep the lights on as they say. So I want to focus in uh, today here on a wonderful viewer question um, or really comment that we, we got in and that is really the feeling as if you kind of lost your human rights when you're with this person. And that's a very good red flag or indicator if you are in a relationship with a malignant narcissist or a psychopath, someone who is seeking to control you above all else, emotionally manipulate you above all else, uh, violating of your boundaries above all else. And what does this really look like? What is the experience? She described the experience basically as feeling like a slave. And so, as you know, um, you know, a slave feels like they are captive. They are taken out of their element. Um, they are removed from their life purpose. They're re removed from their freedoms. They're removed from the exercise of their free will. They're not really permitted that. And if they do speak up, they do try to behave outside, you know, and ex express and exercise those freedoms and live their life purpose, their destiny, tuning into those innate human rights they get, there's retribution, there's consequences, there's backlash, there's punishment. And so the person, the individual learns very quickly, learns helplessness. They learn not to follow up on their instincts. They learn to fo not follow up on their human rights. They learn to not follow up on their freedoms. So they repress, repress, repress. They push it down, push it down, push it down. They suppress it. You know, if you think of like um, a cough suppressant, that you know your natural instinct when you have a cough is to get out the phlegm you know you're coughing coughing and then you'll take a, a suppressant which is a cough suppressant so you won't continue to cough well the um the emotional manipulation that is uh part of the malignant narcissist and psychopathic uh, uh relationship dynamic is that of suppressing your your rights suppressing your voice suppressing your opinion, your true gut feelings. They're basically pushing it down, suppressing it so it doesn't exist. It, it becomes defunct. It becomes annihilated. It becomes extinguished, if you will. And that is because if they are to be in control, that is what they need to do. It's an automatic, habitual part of their personality dynamic. And whether they're conscious of it or not, they're aware of it or not, they're sensitive to its effect on you or not, oftentimes, this is part of the problem is that there's a, a lack of empathy. So they're, they're not able to understand, relate to, embrace, listen to, be receptive to and open to your experience, your, your freedoms. You know, when you try to speak up and exercise those freedoms, you know, I, the, your I want to's, your I am's, your human being state. Oftentimes they're going to be repressive of those. They're going to tell you that you're, you're wrong, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're lazy, um, you shouldn't think this way, you shouldn't feel this way, you shouldn't be this way. They don't allow you to be in your feeling state. They don't allow you to be in your be state, which is natural or, you know, your, you know, your, your truth. Um, they don't want you to be there. They want you to 
get up and then behave according to what their needs are. So your life then becomes like a mirror of reflecting their needs versus embracing your own needs. So that's why we see the entanglement. That's why we see the ensnarement and the feeling as if you're a slave, as if you're not living your own life. We get the depersonalization where people are almost having like an out of body experience where they, they sort of feel like they're living life according to the narcissist terms, even though they're at a job. Um, they're living the life on the narcissist terms, the psychopath's manipulation terms, even though they're out, you know, on a holiday or they're on their free time. They feel like, you know, this is not really what I, what I want to do, but I need to do this in order to avoid punishment, more scolding, more scalding from this person. So they become anesthetized. They become numb to and desensitized to their own inner voice. Um, and so this is very, very hard, or part of the recovery process is to really recover your inner voice and to recover your I am and to recover the I am free, I am me and I am free state where you kind of come to that conscious awareness and then you begin to exercise from that space without feeling guilty, without feeling wrong, without feeling like you're upsetting someone, you're going to receive retribution, you're going to receive punishment. You know, people um, experience this, you know, um, you know, even if the person is no longer in their life or they, the person has passed away, it is so embedded in their thought process, it is so embedded in their B process that they're continuing to um, think, be, and feel, and behave from this sort of repressed, you know, you need me to control you state. So the message is that, you know, you need me to control you. Um, that is the erroneous message. And that is what you have to understand, which is the the wrong programming into your life. Um, you know, the, the very fact is that you, you do control your life. You are decisive. You make decisions for yourself. You are uh, part of your God-given right, which is the free will, which is meaning that, you know, you have to be in touch with your free will. In other words, being open to exercising and kind of breaking that, that, um, that wounded pattern. Um, you know, it, you know, you need to fix something which is broken. And so if your free will is feeling broken, um, by this person, then, you know, we need to come into the awareness now of that and say, okay. Um, that was the erroneous programming. That was um, the wrong marching orders that I was given. And I need to now tune into myself and become more conscious and really become into more of a B state and sort of, um, you know, use that, as we were saying, you know, use that, um, you know, erasing of that old story um, and begin to articulate and define your life moving forward and sort of, you know, look at that as an encapsulated sort of way and say, okay, that was, you know, that was that phase in my life where, you know, this and this was going with this person and I couldn't really perceive or understand or have a conscious awareness of what was going on. And I don't know why I did what I did. I don't know why I was crying. I don't know why, you know, I, I maxed out the credit cards. I don't know why I ate, you know, the whole refrigerator. I don't know why I emptied the case of beer and drank all this. You know, a lot of people then it becomes this subconscious windfall where they're they don't know why they do what they do they don't know why they feel so stuck and oftentimes it's because of those wrong messages that were programmed to you from this person or this number of people and then reaffirmed negatively reinforced from that situation and i know that this is a lot of deep psychology but I, I want you to be able to understand the phenomenon so you can see it for what it is, that it is a phenomenon, it's an encapsulated, you know, situation. Now, you know, you're coming to the awareness, which is the perception, the higher consciousness that's saying, okay, now I see what that was, that, that occurred, that was then, this is now. And coming to kind of a clean slate, um, coming to a new clean slate as of the present moment. And sort of, you know, calming into the body where, you know, it's a very relaxed state. It's a very peaceful state when you come into this awareness where you kind of come back to your own, come back into your body and realize that what was, was, and what will be, can be. And it's coming to that awareness that you can't change or continue to try to act within that role once again. So you really kind of remove yourself from that old template that old blueprint that old story that 
a manipulative person might have had for you and saying, okay, that blueprint for my life, that copyright, that role, that was not me. That did not work for me. You know, that is not fitted and suited for me and my best interest and in who I really am. You know, I can no longer back that up. I can't back up myself in that situation because it leads me to feeling unhappy, powerless, and without choice, without options in my life. And that is not how I'm meant to live. I'm meant to live in more of a B state. I'm meant to live in more of a peaceful state. I'm meant to live in a more relaxed state. I'm meant to live in a more recharged, regenerative state versus an anxiety, depressed, breaking down, sort of, you know, stuck state. And you do need to come to that awareness that really moving forward, becoming really attuned to your I wants, your um, your desires, your interests, and then following those and then backing yourself up for those. Because if you're habitually used to waiting for the narcissist or the psychopath to quote unquote back you up, validate you, you're allowing this maladaptive programming for you to continue in your life. You're, you're saying, yes, you know, continue to give me the wrong message, continue to give me the wrong programming. I'm gonna continue to live my life you know, in this unhappy manner, in this slave-like state. And, you know, you need to break free. Basically, it's like you have the key. You know, you have to realize I have the key. And that is the decision-making and the commitment to let go of that, that controlling and manipulative person. It's like saying, I'm now embracing my freedoms. I'm realizing that, yes, I do have freedoms. I'm, I'm exercising them, my free will. I'm going to go walk 25 spaces across the you know, the floor this way and 25 spaces across the floor that way. That is free will. I'm going to get up and do that right now. That is what free will feels like. It's saying, okay, I'm going to do this right now and I'm giving myself instructions. So you now have to get into the comfortability of giving yourself instructions to follow up on those freedoms. The I want to be, do, have, and become. Articulating those, you know, writing out uh, 20 to 30 of these as we discussed in the recovery journal, I'm becoming aware of that. You know, if I wasn't so ensnared by my circumstances, I would really love to. If I wasn't so feeling so uh, limited by this person or by this present environment, I would really enjoy dot, dot, dot. I would really love to become. I would really love to be. I would really love to have. I would really like to go. I would really like to do. I would really like to follow up. I would really like to pursue. So it's becoming really kind of really getting in deep into that um, that free will space, um, which is your truth. You know, you, we can call it all sorts of different things. It's your empowerment. It's who you are. It's who, who your authentic self. It's the real you. It's the, the you that you want to focus on. It's what you want to focus on and experience in life. And oftentimes you don't give yourself the permission. So I encourage you to give yourself the permission to follow up on these things um, that you have wanted to do. Um, you wanted to feel, you want to be, you want to do, you want to have, and really explore on those. And if it's, you know, oftentimes it's related to professional development, financial development, giving yourself the liberty now and um, really, again, if you have to get an appointment book and write it down, you have to be the one to be accountable for yourself and use the system in place like we talk about the recovery journal, your appointment book, making sure that you're plugging these into, you're actually taking a pen, you're physically writing it down and following up on that. You need to be able to back yourself up, reinforce yourself and become accountable to you because there's no one more important than you really in your recovery process. It is peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.